let the car start. I don't want him to go. I really don't want him to go. If I can hold my breath for two minutes, the car won't start and he won't go. Hmm. That didn't work when I was seven either. Bye. Bye. Ring from the airport. Ring from the airport if you get time. Or even if you don't get time. I'm not proud. What happened? I used to be proud. Mind you, I used to be me as well. What happened to Barbara Jones? Barbara Jones? Uh, Barbara Tate, I mean. <laughs> Mother! <laughs> Where do you think it sounds nice? It's beside the point. My name is Barbara Tate. Mother, you were at the wedding. There's a space in the service if you want to complain. Oh, I can't help that, my love. You're a bit late. He's gone. Just now, your timing was perfect. Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Soon, soon. Well, sooner than you think, maybe. Well, I don't know, while David's away, probably. Mother, he's away for about eight weeks. <laughs> Mother, I'm not going to argue with you. I'll come and see you as soon as I can. And when the house is fit to receive visitors, I will invite you to come and see it, and you can stay and look after me all you like. I know you're my mother. That's why I call you mother. I have to go now, mother. I have an appointment. Just an appointment. I'm not being secretive. Hmm. Am I mad? <laughs> this is a blood pressure machine, not a madness machine. <laughs> well, am I blood pressure then? Your blood pressure's okay. <laughs> you startled me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was flippant. I was looking for time. Shall we start again? I don't know if I can. It took a long time building up to that. What makes you think you're mad? I'm just being stupid. Self-indulgent and stupid. I'm going to have a cup of coffee. Then I'm going to do my calls. You want to have a cup of coffee and a chat? I'm worried about the baby. Why? I don't know. I just am. Very worried or just slightly concerned? Is she normal? <laughs> There's no such thing as normal. Each baby is itself. The nearest thing you can get to normal is average, with babies as with sex lives. Why did you say that? Ah, and that. I haven't met Mr. Tate, have I? Why did you say that about sex lives and why did you follow it up with that? Ah, there's no such thing as a normal sex life and there's no such thing as a normal baby. But lots of people worry about achieving the norm in both instances. Oh. All right. I seem to have picked a scab, don't I? What? Oh, you nearly jumped off the seat. More coffee. What? Oh, no. Yes. Thank you, please. Thank you. So, why do you think you're mad? Do you know? All of a sudden, I don't. Good. I'm on my own too much. I complain because I can't be me, and then I complain because I'm on my own too much. I live in a bubble... There's only me and the baby, and the rest of the world is something else. We look in, and they look out. The other way around, isn't it? What? If you live in a bubble, you look out. They look in. Oh, <laughs> I suppose so. There's a barrier, anyway. Where is she now? Outside, in the pram. Why did you wonder if she was normal? Oh, take no notice of me. I'm neurotic. Look, your notes haven't come from your previous doctor yet. Come and see me in a couple of days. What difference will they make? Difference? Oh, none at all, I should think. But it's always helpful to know what's been going on and other opinions. Oh. Is that all? Come and see me. Ring me in a couple of days. Okay. And I'll see the baby, too. What's her name, by the way? Sarah. Ah. A couple of days, then. Yes? Good morning. This is Tate. Yes? I'm Roy Brown. Jane Rayner asked me to pop in and see how you were settling in. Jane Rayner? I'm not sure I know. The doctor, Jane Rayner. And she asked you to call? Well, she told me where you live. It's not exactly a breach of the Hippocratic Oath. <clears throat> or is it? Oh. <laughs> well, shall I go? No, no, please, come in. I'm sorry. Why? I was very ungracious, rude. It was kind of you to call. But? I beg your pardon? Now, you didn't want me to call, but you're too polite to say so. And having let me in, you're trying to think of a way to get rid of me as quickly as you can. 
At least I'm not turbulent. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Am I right? Am I so transparent? Oh, we get used to it, we men of the cloth. I had no idea it was going to be so much like being a salesman. I'm not religious, you see. Lots of people say that, too. Most of the time, they mean that they uh, haven't time to go to church. How are you on being neighbourly? A bit out of practice. I'm one of your nearest neighbours. I haven't seen a church in the village. Just over the brow of the hill. If you stand in your back bedroom, the right-hand one, and stand on tiptoe, you can just see the tip of the weather vane. You know the house, then? Yes. How? Oh, one of my flock. I uh, visited him when he was ill. In the back bedroom? Yes. Did he die there? No, in the hospital. Away from here. Can I offer you a cup of tea? Have you been here long? Thirteen years. Oh. Yes, I'm older than I look. <laughs> uh, the man you visited, the, the one who died, how long ago was that? The first year I came here. I was young enough to feel angry and useless. In front of me, he just dried up and blew away. Well, he was very old. And the people who've just left, the uh, believers, did you know them? Slightly, only slightly. They were hardly here at all before they decided to go. It seems so strange. What does? To alter the house so much and then to go before it was finished. There was so little left to do. But you're carrying on where they left off. We are. And you're going to keep the same plan? Oh, I really don't know. David, my husband, has done most of the planning. I think we've got the same builder. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody wants you. Mm. How old is she? Six months. Uh, and we, we haven't decided yet whether to get her christened or not. Ah. But uh, I think we probably will. Will you? Yes. It, it's not fair to make children feel different just to satisfy their parents' opinion. <laughs> well, I'll go. Uh, thank you for letting me in. Oh, thank you for coming. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah? well, I was going to say that you'd help to pass the time, but I hesitated to hand you the same status as a romantic novel or having a bath. <laughs> <laughs> now, come and see the church when you have a minute and, and bring your daughter. I'd like her to see... Where... Well, there's, there's nothing wrong with her lungs, anyway. Why did you say that? What? About her lungs. Why did you say that? Oh, Mrs. Taylor was an idle remark. I'm sorry. Uh, brought on by the increase in decibel. Something's wrong. No. No, please go. I... You're right. I think I'm neurotic about her lungs. My life seems to be governed by them morning, noon and night. I'm sorry I was so sharp. I will come and see the church. We both will. But it won't be for a couple of days. The men are coming back to finish off at the back of the mill, and I have to be here. My husband's away, and I have strict instructions about what's to be done and not done. Mr. Goodwin, this is Barbara Tate. Your men were supposed to be coming to do some work at my house today. So far, nobody's turned up. I have to go out shortly, and I wondered if you could tell me what time I might expect them. There's some notes my husband has left, and I want to make sure that... It's the mill in Felbury, which water green. Well, thank you, but would it have been too much trouble for you to have let me know? Tomorrow, then. Thank you, Mr. Goodwin. Hello? Hello yourself. I'm returning your call. And I also have an ulterior motive. Oh, I'm not sure I'm allowed to have anything to do with ulterior stuff. Oh, it's not so ulterior, actually. The baby goes to sleep better if I push her in the fresh air. Well, where is she? At the gate in the shade. May we be introduced? Oh, please don't. I've only just quietened her. Oh, all right. Plenty of time. We'll have a look round. Mm, please. Come on, then. Through the back. We can walk up here and see your place and mine. I suppose she'll be all right there. Rooks don't bite babies. Do they have any rooks? Yes, she will. No, they don't. And yes, they are. Oh, I reserve my civilities for Sundays, but they aren't going to bother anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. Good. Oh, oh God, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> when I was a trainee, Vicar, there was a faintly scurrilous joke we used to lighten our evenings with that involved a very similar predicament to the one you find yourself in now. Aren't you going to tell me? Mm -hmm, trade only, I'm afraid. But don't worry about it. God won't. Thank you. I'm getting puffed. Nearly there. Here, give me a hand. Right. There. Beautiful. Yes. It's really beautiful. <laughs> the house. The mill looks different from here. The water in the lodge looks so deep. Why is it called a lodge? I don't know. I... 
what? <laughs> well, when I was a boy, we lived for a while in a, a little town in the north. And there was a wine lodge, and we used to hang about outside for hours trying to peep in through the doors as they opened. We had this idea that all the people sat around a huge lake of wine, <laughs> dipping their glasses in it from time to time as they grew thirsty. The people before you, the leavers, they were going to drain the lodge. Yes, so are we. The men should have come today. Uh, Is that a thinking error, or are you uh, waiting for some encouragement? I don't know what to call you. My name's Roy. It may take me a little time to work up to it. I shall probably call you Hum at first. Uh, can I see inside the church? Cold. And serene. So quiet, peaceful. Well, I'm not sure I approve of that. You should be here on a Sunday afternoon when all things bright and beautiful are clanging off the rafters. Green angels? Yes, whoever gave us the stained glass employed someone who was good at green, I think. You don't approve? No, I'm old-fashioned. Even if I don't go to church, I still prefer white angels. The baby! What was it? Is she all right? Let me see. It's all right. It's all right. Can I see? It's nothing. She must have been startled. Oh. What? Her hair, her face. They're wet. Cold and wet. Well, tears. Surely tears. She was crying. She cried once. Uh, the walls are thick. She she might have wakened. Uh, cried to herself quietly for a while. And, and then got fed up. You're right. You're right. What's that? They're on the wall. What is it? The moss. Lichen. But soon. Wet. The churchyard walls are cool. Sometimes damp. I'll walk you home. We'll be fine. There's no need for it. Thank you. This house surrounds me. Yes? Uh, Mrs. Peck? Yes? Johnny Gold. Uh, come to fix the final pieces. Beg your pardon? Contractor's man. Uh, Mr. Goodwin sent me down. Said you was on the phone. Stuff hadn't been fixed. Oh. Pumping and that. Oh, but, but what about the men who were working here? The two men from the village? Mr. Stone and Mr. Taylor? Are they not coming back? Ah, well, it's different, isn't it? Uh, this is pumping. Me and Arthur, we're from down the road over Taxbury. We don't get bothered with no trouble about pumping. Not like villagers. I'm sorry. You must think I'm very stupid, but I don't understand. We've got a letter here from Mr. Goodwin. Says to show it to you. Start the pump and that's all for garnet. Right, there we are. Look, that's it. Isn't it? Mrs. Tate. Witchwater Green. Funny old name. And you're here to start the pump and drain the pool, the mill lodge. Well, of course, some pools, Renier. We've got the pump. We're going to start it going after that, is anyone's guess. What? All right, we go straight round, fix up and prime through the back. Yes, yes, I suppose so, yes. And how are you today? Same as ever, I suppose, plugging along, taking each day as it comes, one day at a time, that's what they say, isn't it? Only do alcoholics as a rule. Uh, shouldn't we be saying ouch now? <laughs> no, not really. I drank more than was good for me for a little while. I don't drink at all now. When was this? A long time ago. Recently? Oh, I feel like a clumsy dentist again. Caught another nerve. Roly, my son, is 13, nearly 14. It was a shock to find myself pregnant again. I started drinking heavily because of it. Hot baths and gin, or something more psychologically based. I didn't want another baby. Ah, it wasn't planned. No, it was the wine-dark Aegean Sea. Or the wine-darkened Aegean me. <laughs> I bet if men had to have babies, they'd find something that was better than remembering pills or forgetting them. You forgot to take a pill. I have never forgotten a single thing in my entire life. Beside me, elephants are dilettantes and poseurs. Listen, I'm a highly trained, skilled, hard-working, dedicated solicitor with a very successful job. I had a son, and I loved him. Love him. But I was keen enough to send him to boarding school so I could go back to work. Do you think there's enough drink distilled that could make me forget anything that might stop me from being me? Do you? Would you forget, would you? Mm. Oh, don't mmm at me. I've had enough mmms to last me forever. Mother, husband, neighbours, sister, all humming and umming and smiling. Dear Barbara, she got broody and wouldn't admit it. Never mind, dear, we all know how it feels. The maternal drive's too strong to stifle. Nobody blames you, dear. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Okay. So what's your answer? Hang on to enough of my personality for another six years and then start again. But it's not That's easy. That's not what I meant. Oh, that. 
I don't know. A duff pill or... Or what? Nothing. All right. So, so, so what can we do to carry you through these next six years? Always provided you stay here six years. Do you like the village? It's all right. It's a surprising place. Oh, it's not a surprising place. It's the least surprising place I've ever been in. It's absolutely and totally predictable. I'm surprised anyone ever comes to live here. You came, didn't you? I'm a local girl. Girl? Woman. I went and came back. What brought you here? Particularly to... to Witchwater Green. Yes. Where does the name come from? No idea. Someone thought it was pretty, I expect. Same as most house names. Why, why did you come? We were looking for somewhere handy for lots of places, and with David travelling such a lot, we had to be about 20 miles from the airport. That's it, really. So few houses fall empty. You were lucky to hear about this one. I suppose it comes under the heading of medical advice, really. My doctor heard about it and thought I would be better quiet. <laughs> he views women as a vastly interesting set of orifices. The only one he doesn't care for is the mouth. <laughs> that he prefers shut. I was pleased to find you were a woman. I quite like it that way myself. Your doctor heard about it, perhaps. Or someone wanted to sell quickly for some reason or other, and we were in the market with hot hands full of lovely money, having sold our own and been left with nowhere to live. Talking about your doctor? Yes? He sent me your notes. Oh. And now I know why you asked me if I thought you were mad. Oh, I had some very funny notions. Would you like to talk about them? No. No, not now. Well, if not now, then some other time, maybe. Maybe. Are we finished? Next time, I'd like to have a better look at Sarah, isn't it? Yes. Why? A doubleless doctor and health clinic. We'll need to see how she's progressing. That's all. That's all. I don't see why. I'm sorry, but I just don't see why. Well, what we've got to do first, we've got to take the water out of this land here. There's no deep mystery, Mrs. Simple matter of doing things in order, nice and regular, that's all. But the important job is to drain the pool. You must see that. Well, uh, been here some few years, by all accounts. Can't be no almighty hurry, I shouldn't think. Oh, damn. A baby crying, Mrs. Look, why don't he go and tend to her and leave us I'll to... do what I'm best at, and you do what you're best at. Is that it? It seems to make sense to me, Mrs. Oh, damn, damn, double damn. Barbara Tate. Because I can't remember the bloody number, that's why. Anyway, I'm a person, not a set of digits. Oh, David, I'm sorry. Where are you? At the airport? What time will you be home? Far rain. Oh, David, that really is the last straw. When will you be home? That's nearly three weeks. The damn babies cry and the workmen will not do what they're supposed to do. And this house weeps and creaks in the night and I wish... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know how you worry. No, I don't want you to talk to anyone. Just finish your business and come home as quickly as you can. Fine, fine. Where are you staying? Mm -hmm, all right. I'll give you a buzz when it's all right. No, I will. It's important to me. Mrs. Tate. Oh. Mrs. Tate, are you home? Oh, dear. Come in, Reverend Roy, come in. From the look on your face, I'm stopping you swearing. Shall I take a turn around the garden, or better still, can I listen? Listen? Well, even second-hand hellfire and damnation is better than nothing. Or can I help? Well, I don't think prayers would be any more good than curses. What is it? The men have come to start the pumps to drain the big pool, and they're insisting that they can, they can only drain this little puddle at the side. They have to do that before they can start on the big one. Why? And does it make a great difference? Well, it makes a difference to me... You see how the house is built? Yes. One wall of this house is the bank of that damn pool. I still don't understand. I don't want to sound like a hysterical woman. I don't want to sound like a yes, hysterical yes, anything. Sit, sit down a minute and tell me. Listen. Can you hear anything? Well, the pump. Normal noises. Birds. Breeze. Trees rustling. Can you hear any water noise? No. In the night. Imagination or not. I can hear water noises. Well, there's a huge pool right next door to the house. Of course you'll hear water noises at night when everything's quiet. Yeah. But it would set your mind a little more at ease if these men started their pump in the lodge. At least it might drown out any noise in the night with the sound of the pumping. I could tell myself something was happening. Right. Stop that a minute, will you please? Hello, Vicar. 
John Gold, isn't it? That's right, Vicar. Johnny Gold over at the Taxbury Way. Brought in special for this one, Vicar. Mrs. Tate says you won't drain the big pool. Well, it didn't matter I won't, Vicar. You, well, you know that as well as anyone. It's a matter of small things to do, and then maybe big things will happen. What are you saying? Uh, country expressions, Mrs. No more. It's country sayings. Will you start the pump in the big pool, please? Well, I can't do that, Reverend. I, I've got to... Uh... Do you know me? Uh, well... Do you? Yes, I do, Reverend. Start the pump in the big pool, please. In the lodge. You look quite fierce. I'm amazed. If I'd been an evildoer, I'd have been very impressed. An evildoer? No, not you, Mrs. Tate, not you. Of all people, not you. Of all people? Well, let's say I'd be surprised. Disappointed, too. Okay, but thank you anyway for the compliment and the miracle, even if minor. Well, I understand local people. They sometimes seem obstructive. Often it's no more than a different way of looking at things. I've been meaning to ask you something. Yeah? Why is the church built so far out of the village? Oh, pure availability of land, I should think. Most of the village, the old village, nestles in the hollow. The church came quite a bit later. They put it in the only place that was left. When we first drove here, David and I, all the land around was so dry and parched, we were depressed. Yes. It's been a poor summer for water, but uh, that doesn't bother us here too much. It's as if the village sits in a green cup. When you see it from a long way off, from the high road, it looks like a, a green velvet cup. I fell in love with it at once. Pity it. Hmm? Nothing. Pity the love affair didn't last. Yes. Well, give us a chance, Mrs. Tate. You hardly know us. Love has to grow. It can't be forced. <sighs> it's odd. The baby seems to cry so little, and yet you always seem to be unlucky. <laughs> Uh, I'll go. Uh, let you see to her. Right. Uh, oh, I nearly forgot. When you came, I started in with my troubles. Had you come for anything special? Oh, we're having a little coffee morning at the church hall tomorrow, the Women's Institute and myself. Will you come? I, uh... Oh, do come. If it does nothing else, it'll take you out of yourself. And you might make a friend. Lots of women come from all around. They're not by any means all religious. My son comes home tonight from boarding school for a couple of days. I wouldn't want to leave him until he'd made some friends of his own. Well, bring him if you like. There'll be children. <laughs> I'm a very persistent do good aunt. I won't promise, but thank you. Aunt, thanks again for the pump. Mrs. Day's fine. Mr. Goad, the pump stopped working. What's that, Mrs.? In the night, the pump stopped working. I heard it stop. Oh, ten never no mind, Mrs. Stop time to time, pump will. Leaves, bits of twig jammed back down by the pipe. Ain't never no mind. Soon be clear, soon be pumping. Oh, I have to go out later to the church coffee morning. I'll leave the kitchen door on the lap so you can make yourself some tea. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Yeah, go on up over the brow, Arthur. See how that pump stopped. Soon have her fixed and working. Thank you. Will you please get up? We're going out and I don't want to be late. Oh, damn. Damn. Rowley, get out of bed. What? Mr. Gold? Mr. Gold? Mr. Gold? There she is. What do you think? How can I tell? I've seen her twice in surgery. She seems very tightly held in. And I've read her notes. And the baby? What about the baby? Ah, oh, well, I'm not sure. But Mrs. Tate is not easy to know. I have a very funny feeling about Mrs. Tate, and I think you're quite uh, right. <coughs> Mrs. Tate, how love you to make it. Why don't you park Sarah, isn't it? Why don't you leave Sarah in the pram park and come and have a cup of coffee with us? Hello, Mrs. Tate. How are you? How's the pump? Hello, both of you. Don't talk to me about pumps. Oh, pumps. Pumps? 
Uh, hang on, I won't be a minute. Are they coming? Well, there are two men come over from Taxbury to finish the job. I had to have a word with them for her. Goodwin was being difficult. Yeah, here we are. Now then, Mrs. Tate. Sorry about that. We have a selection of teas made fresh in the pot every ten minutes. Earl Grey with oil of bergamot, lapsed and chouchon, tasting with tarry twine, and various other delights. Right, this one. Thank you. Oh, right. Good. Ah, I thought you were bringing your son. He was press ganged outside the hall, I'm pleased to say. He was last seen disappearing into the middle distance with a merry, if small, band of pilgrims. <laughs> now, what about this pump? In the night. Stopped working. Stopped working? Ah. Oh, I don't know. Got bunged up or something. Anyway, the men came and they'd taken it away. Hello, Vicar. Oh. Hello, Dr. Rayner. Hello, Mrs. Williams. Hello, Wendy. Oh, is anyone going to introduce me? It's not fair keeping the new faces yourself, you know. Yes, of course. I think I'll circulate. See you later, people. This is Wendy Williams, Mrs. Tate. Barbara Tate. Oh. Hello. Are you new in the village? Oh, we moved into the area about two weeks ago, but uh, it's the first time I've ventured out socially. <laughs> Poor you. It's not exactly a metropolis, is it? Not exactly. Well, uh, ladies, if you'll excuse me, I have to organise the draw. Good riddance. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? Mm, I feel harsh today. Where do you live? In the mill, Witchwater Green, over at the other end of the church. Oh, do you indeed? Yes. You bought it from the Leavers? Yes. Well, my husband saw it all, actually. Mm. How do you happen to hear of it? Excuse me for asking, is there some reason why everyone should want to know what made us buy this house? Well, curiosity, I should think. Pure nose disease. And the fact that they left so quickly. The whole thing was over in about four weeks. They'd gone and that was that. I was a bit peeved, actually. Oh, did you want to buy it? <laughs> me? I should say not. Oh. oh. It was Jane Lever, living up to her name. And I thought she was a friend of mine. <laughs> Listen, do you know what she did? She... You mm. can't stop now. I'm intrigued. Look, how can I see you? Is that all right? Yes, of course. Hello. Oh, no. How's it going? Making friends? Look at patronising. Oh, that lady bountiful. <laughs> God, it can you notice with me. Valium and gin don't mix. I feel like a corpse. I'll see if I can pick one up for you next time I'm down at the county hospital. And if you're mixing Valium and gin, I don't want to be your doctor anymore. Well, that's right, Pontius. Who gave you the Valium? You. I think I advised washing them down with water, though, if I remember. Those things do not mix with booze, and I won't tell you again. Actually, if you do it again, I may not be able to tell you, or you won't be able to listen. Oh, Mrs. Tate, Roy Brown asked me to tell you he'll be popping over later to make sure you get your pump started okay. And your little cherub is making signs of wanting to go home. Can I come down, or am I being a nuisance? Look at this. What? <clears throat> oh. Yes, oh. I thought you said go to take the pump away to fix it. That's what you get for jumping to conclusions. All that happened was I heard him drive away. I can't believe it. Let's have a look. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. Oh, I don't believe you. And what's that? Oh. The pipe's been cut. That's why the pump stopped working. It's got an automatic cutout. It won't pump if it's got something going through it that isn't water. What? Bunged up with grass and, and cut. And... Oh. What in the Lord's name is that? This has nothing to do with any Lord that you and I would want to have anything to do with. Can I use your phone? Yes, of course. Why? I don't understand. What is that thing? Got a lot of names and a lot of meanings. All of them stupid and all of them superstitious. Country people have strange fears. This is the vicar. Your men have stopped working because someone has put a water doll. A water doll beside the pump at Witchwater Green. I won't have this, Mr. Goodwin. Mr. Goodwin, you know who I am, don't you? Yes. Now, send your men back up here at four o'clock. I'll meet them here and we will sort this out. Thank you, Mr. Goodwin. I'll come back at four o'clock. And, uh, please... I, I won't talk to anyone about yeah, Especially not Wendy Williams, if you don't mind. Just a minute. Oh, uh, hello. I was bored. 
come in. Anyway, it's ages since I've been in here. And I'm nosy enough to want to know what you've been doing. What have you been doing with it? Oh, nothing much yet. How do you find it? Being next door neighbours to Holy Joe. Oh, it's proved pretty useful so far. He got the workman going. Well, he would. He's nosier than me, and with less excuse. Are you going to do much to the inside? Oh, don't really know yet. We might. We'll sort it out when David gets back. Oh, where's he gone? Middle East. High-powered property stuff. Mm. <laughs> how long's he away for? Oh, some time yet. He never knows how long he's going to be when he leaves. Are you paralysed with fright up here on your own? Well, I would be. I babysat for the leaver's dog once while June went to get some stuff for its ear. I don't think I've ever been more scared in my life. Why were you scared? It's a very creepy place. Filled with oozings and creepings and tricklings. Oof. And as for that bloody great pool, well... What happened to your friend? Well, she wasn't really my friend. I just knew her. We were both lonely and bored. I used to come up here and bring booze, and we used to sit and complain to each other. <laughs> oh, I'm glad she went, really. She was dragging me down with her. She didn't like her husband. And there was nothing else. She just cleared off one day. Boom, just like that. One day she was here, the next she was gone. <laughs> oh, Derek put as good a face as he could on it. Next we knew he'd sold the house and moved. We used to sit out there with a bottle, looking into the water. Oof. Creepy. I wish she'd told me where she was going. Then I could really put those wittering old women where they should be. Rumours. Ghost stories. What stories? Oh, but nothing. Drive you mad. Got anything to drink? Sorry. You'll start, you see. <laughs> this place is creepy. It's giving me the glooms all over again. Where's your baby? No, and your son. I thought you said he was at home now. Oh, Roly came in for about half an hour after that coffee thing, and I haven't seen him since. He's met some children, for which I'm thankful. But where they go, I've no idea. The silence is deafening. Who are they? No idea. Lynn and uh, Douglas, that's it. I think they must spend their lives in ponds, judging by the state of his hands and knees when he came in. He smelled like frog spawn. Country matters. <laughs> <laughs> and the baby? Can I see the baby? Why not? Come on. It's time she got up. I like the room. I haven't been upstairs before. Hmm, it's cool. Cool and green. It's the light from outside. Filtering through the trees, it turns everything green. <laughs> <laughs> Even the baby. What? Oh, it's a joke. I'm sorry. Um, she doesn't look green. She looks perfect and pink and normal. <laughs> Don't you, my love? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, she likes yeah. you. <laughs> ah, it's all in the way you hold your mouth. Isn't it, my pretty? <laughs> yeah. I don't think she wants to get up. Oh, she comes round slowly, and she'll have to get up. Well, she won't sleep tonight. Can't have two insomniacs. I can't get my bearing. Where are we? Oh, this wall. This one here is the wall that's back by the pool. But that one there? Yes. Oh. Behind that wall is N gallons of water. Yes. Wendy. What? Leave the baby a minute. Come here. Come here by this wall. Well? Put your ear by the wall. Why? Please. Tell me why first. I just want you to listen. Why? I just want to know if you can hear anything, that's all. Hear anything? What could I hear? It's a wall. Walls don't talk. Through the wall. Can you hear anything through the wall? It's that damn vicar, isn't it? What? This was his idea, wasn't it? He told you to do this, didn't he? Wendy! Well, you can just tell him it didn't work this time either. I can't imagine what you're talking about, but if it bothers you, then don't worry about it. Just leave it alone. It's not as simple as that. Hello, Mrs. Payne. You in? Just a minute. Listen to me. <laughs> and I suppose this is a coincidence, too. At night, I come into this room. There is no noise anywhere in the house, but when I come in here, there is a very special and very specific noise. I just wanted to know if you could hear it, too, or if I was going mad, that's all. There is no plot between me and the vicar. I'm sorry if you thought there was, but there isn't. Mrs. Payne, are you in? What 
sort of noise? Now, Wendy, it's all right. I, I seem to have upset you. Believe me, that's the last thing I wanted to do. Look, what sort of noise? Scratching. A slow, insistent scratching. Like... Like what? Hey, you all right? I'm fine. Come in, Vicar. I won't be a minute. <laughs> like what? Like a fingernail on a wall. Are you sure Roy Brown hasn't put you up to this? Please tell me if he has. I won't be cross, I promise. I won't be cross. But I must know. Come on down. I'll prove he hasn't. Hello. I came in. So I see. Vicar. It's all right. I, I believe you. It's all right. No, it's not all right, Wendy. I'm getting very tired of people and mysteries and hints and illusions. I want to know, and the best way to find out is to ask. Is something the matter? I just asked Wendy something, and she reacted as if she'd been shot. Barbara, please don't. I asked her to put her ear to the wall and tell me if she heard anything. She said she practically shouted that you'd put me up to asking her. Please tell her I didn't do it because you asked me to. That's true. I didn't ask you to. Satisfied, Wendy? But I was going to. What? What do you mean? I want to know what? Mrs. Williams. Wendy. Do you mind? If I tell her? What difference does it make? If you don't tell her while I'm here, you'll tell her behind my back. You told your friend, the quack. Can we sit down? Why not? I came across because I saw Mrs. Williams' car. I wanted to talk to you, to tell you something. I thought it might be a good idea to talk to the two of you together. Mrs. Williams is suffering from a guilt feeling. She's talked to me about it. And you are suffering from ghosties and ghoulies and things that go bump in the night. I hear things in the night. I do not imagine them. No, I'm sure you don't. But you listen for them and you expect them and you invest what are perfectly ordinary night noises with mystery and terror. A mouse becomes a ghostly scratch. A fish becomes something from the Black Lagoon. A smear of wet moss becomes a blob of primeval slime. Ladies. Ladies, this is 1984. If you get together and talk about what bothers you, it will disappear. Guilt feelings. What guilt feelings? Mrs. Williams? I... I felt responsible for the way that Juneva... What? Disappeared. She left. She disappeared. But both sets of fears are irrational. There are no ghosts in the world, and June Lever left because... Well, tell her yourself. You'll feel better if you do it yourself. She was the nearest thing to a best friend I had. What I did was unforgivable. I was bored. I knew she didn't love him. He worked at home a great deal. I used to come over in the afternoons, when she was out. One day, her car broke down and she walked home from the village. She walked in on us. She spat at me. Three days later, she went away. I don't excuse what you did. I haven't even any right to comment, but... if there had been anything worth saving in their marriage, they would have saved it. What made you worried about... about the walls? What? She could be vicious. I thought when she went so completely I thought that that he that he'd have thrown her that he'd killed her I thought she was in the water Lever is a gentle man there's no force on earth that would make him kill you saw him after she left he was heartbroken yes but he was peaceful too Oh, hello, Mr. Goad. You're early. Wouldn't mind getting started. Wouldn't mind getting finished, neither. The vicar's here. Oh, I won't be knocked out there. Vicar will be here right enough. Uh, will you come in? Uh, better not, I shouldn't think. Covered in mud and all sorts. Vicar, it's Mr. Goad. Yeah. Did Mr. Goodwin tell you what I told him? Well, I don't know, Vicar, do I? He told me to come up here, told me you'd give me the telling of what I should do. I told him I'd do what I could do. And after that, well, you know the village better than me. I can start that pump, no question, and I can put that pipe in the water. 
Whether they both be there in the morning, well, you've got a better idea than me. Taxbury's where I live, but I got cousins in Felbury, and this is where my mother was raised. I'll start her, but I won't come back no more. You know what was on that pump. You seen what was in it. Will you excuse us a minute, Mrs. Tate? No. I beg your pardon? No. I want to know what's going on. Well, Why do you I... want me to excuse you? Do you want to say something to Mr. Goad that would make him get on with what I'm paying him to do? Uh, yes. Well, then, it would be nice if you would do just that. Oh. Right. And then, if he decides he doesn't want to do it, he can tell me and I can drive over to Waitminster and I can get a pump myself and some instructions and I can damn well drain the pool myself because I'm getting sick to death of hints and illusions and a sabotage. I think someone doesn't want that pool drained. Right enough, Mrs. Truest word been spoke here today. Well, I've been about any road. That's a harsh thing to say. It's not harsh. Not meant harsh, leastways. Can we walk over to the uh, pumping area? Or not, as the case may be? Where are you going? Oh, you might as well come. I think we might be going to hear the legend of the water sprite. Well, go on, Mr. Goad. What's going on? <laughs> Apparently somebody doesn't want the pool drained. I wouldn't mind knowing why. Oh, not that again. I thought you'd laid all that to rest, Vicar. What? The Leavers had all sorts of problems. Threatening letters and everything. Well, why didn't you tell me? I didn't get much chance, did I? You started on about dragons in a skirting board, and he laid bare my... Oh, oh never mind. Go on, Mr. Gold. That's all right, John Gold. <clears throat> village lives on water. You see how this bit, this village here, stands cut down your green all round. You go 20 miles any way you like, north, south, east, or the other way. West? No, the other way, Mrs. That's what you'll hear folks say, the other way. You walk or ride as far as you feel inclined. If you want to make a living, you'll have to scratch. And the rock will strike sparks off your hole before you're three inches down. Well, go on. Well, these village men you're in, Felbury, they say there's in no pool. And if the water runs out of here, then there soon won't be no village. Because if the water go, then the soil go. And if the soil go, well, then they'll have to farm scrub sheep and there won't be no living for nobody. And that's why no one wants this pump working. They say this pole here stretches down for a mile and nothing thrown in there ever comes out. So I'm going to start this here pump, missus. I'll set a run in and then I'm going off away. And if the water's still coming out of here tomorrow, that's when you'll see me again. And if it's not, then you won't. There is a glimmer of reason in what they say. A deep pool of water can form its own microclimate and start the cycle of precipitation in an area like this. Or so I understand. I don't want to be rude. No, that means you're going to. Oh, go on, though. I can take it. I will be very obliged if you will not bolster ancient superstition with dubious semi-scientific fact. Ah. I may be an LLB, but my first degree included an element of geography. And I've never heard of a microclimate that was quite so micro as that. <laughs> what, drink, anyone? I didn't have any in the house. I was saving you from yourself. I thought you were an incipient plonky. <laughs> no, you don't. Now I feel that if you are, it's your own business. Vicar? Uh, call me Roy. Uh, when I get to know you better. <laughs> well, it was nice of you both to call. And uh, thank you, Roy, for at least bringing Mr. Gold back again. Ah. Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> word. And I'll tell you something else. I'm not going to sleep tonight. I'm going to stay awake all night. If anyone switches that pump off, I'm going to know who it is. I have to stay up till dawn. Well, if you have any problems, ring me. 9033. <laughs> right. Uh, are you off, Vicar? Uh, well, yes, I suppose so. Cheerio, then. Yeah, uh, right. Cheerio, ladies. Uh, let me know if there's anything I can do, won't you? Oh, we will, we will. Bye. Good riddance. Wendy. Uh, bye. I'll let you know if anything happens. You were a trifle pointed, weren't you? I was afraid he wasn't going to go. Listen, mm? is Roly going back tonight? I suppose so, if he ever comes in again. I'll have to get him cleaned up before I put him on the train. Can I come over and, and stand guard with you? I'll say you can. Do you mean it? I'm bored stiff at home. And I'll look after the baby while he's taken to the station. Oh, fantastic. He will be mounting butterflies. <laughs> I mean, uh, sticking pins through them, actually, and putting them in glass boxes. Um, not really mounting them, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I'm glad of your company, anyway. <laughs> My pleasure. This is a dead hole for me, anyway. Your village, I mean. 
Wait till you've been here a couple of months. You'll see. Well, it was supposed to be a bit of a rest cure for me. I had some uh, problems after the baby was born. PND? Uh, sort of. It was a long gap between babies, though, wasn't it? I wasn't going to have any more. We were on holiday. Rowley had gone to boarding school. I'd had a bad year at work. Got very involved with a client emotionally. And we decided to try and save a rocky marriage. Can you keep a secret? I'm not very good at it. But in your case, I'll try very hard and... <laughs> Honest, anyway. I went out swimming one day in the sea. I was a bit unhappy. I swam way out and lay in the water face down. Then I turned over and floated for a bit. The sun was low and the light turned me and the water all golden, washing me in light. I thought, how lovely for it to all end like that. I was very unhappy. You must have been. Suddenly there was a great surge in the water under me and I went under. Well? I was missing for about 12 hours and fishermen found me. When they found me, I was naked. A little while later, after we got home, I found I was having a baby. Oh. My mind flew into little bits. I, I, I couldn't put it back again. I felt that everyone was looking at me. My doctor heard about this place, and David came up and fell in love with it, so we moved. Well, quiet enough. But I should have thought you'd got more people looking at you here than where you were before, wherever it was. It's a local hobby here, looking at people. Dr. Dollis said it would too. Uh, Who? My doctor, Dr. Dollis. He said... What's the matter? Jane Rayner, your doctor here. Well, the only doctor here come to that... Her name is Dollis before she got married. It's one of the old village names. Her mother still lives here at the bottom end. Her brother's a doctor, I think. How oh, funny. I wonder why she didn't say. I wonder if he didn't want you to think you'd been handed over. I didn't want to fuel the paranoia. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's the matter? Listen. I can't hear anything. Nor can I. The pump has stopped. Come on. The water's still trickling. Where's the torch? Oh, here. What are you going to do? Shh. Shh. Keep still. Oh, I'm going back in to ring my brow. Keep still. Someone moving over there. Fall. He didn't. He ran, he ran, and he he jumped in the water. He what? jumped. I mean, did you see? Did you, did you recognize him? Oh, there's no sign of him. He's not coming up. I can't see anything. You'd better ring the police and get Roy. Roy Brown. There's no need for you to stand here, either of you. It's not your fault. I haven't switched the torch no, he on. You jumped. You said yourself it was nobody's fault except his own. Mm. It's getting light. Oh, I've never known hours take so long to go. Well, there's no point in bringing any machinery up the lane in the dark. Oh, thank you for coming over. Father, I'm here quickly. Have they found him? Wendy, where are you going? I think I'm... I'm sure. I think I know who it is. No, leave her. Well? I couldn't believe it. When I saw him in the light from the torch, I knew. Who is it? It's Derek. It's Derek Lever. The man you bought the house from. Hello? Uh, hello, Mother. No, I'm just off. No, Wendy Williams, the woman who was with me. She's coming over to look after the baby. Hmm. Well, she went to give her evidence yesterday. I told you, you just don't listen. It's a coroner, that's all, and it's a preliminary hearing been out of his mind, poor devil. I have to give evidence about some letters he wrote to David. He was trying to get us to sell the house back. Oh, David was trying to keep me from worrying, wasn't he? Yes, very kind. Just nearly drove me out of my wits with fright. Now oh, the doctor's giving me a tonic. I feel much better. Now, I can't stop to argue with you now, Mother. I'm late for this damn hearing, and God knows where Rhody's off to. Ah, here's Wendy. Bye, Mother. 
Hello. Hello. Hi. Look, uh, the baby's asleep and the Lord knows where Roly is. Can I go? I'm late. You look very chirpy. What's that stuff they're giving you? I am, I think, but I don't care. It could be anything, but it's keeping me alive. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. And don't give cheeks to the coroner. He's got no sense of humour. That was quick. I haven't fed the baby yet. Hey, you've only been, what, two hours less than that? Is she awake? Well, she woke up early. So I asked Roly to take her off for a walk with those unseen friends of his. Hey, listen. I've been reading this book. This reader is I'm weird. absolutely shattered. Just a bit... Oh, sorry. What? Uneasy. I thought it was all over, but now... Is there any tea left? I just made it. Here. Now. What happened? The whole thing just been adjourned. It was so oh, horrible. Here, sit down. Tell me. Now, there was another witness, no one we'd heard of, from a psychic research society. Ouch. Oh, sorry, I left it there. What is it? Here. Oh, my book of names. I can't resist them. I'm the only person in the world with a name that isn't in any name book. It was invented by James Barry. Oh, really? Oh, go on, anyway, um, about the what? Oh, this woman had had a letter some months ago. She'd been peddling it round all the police stations, but no one had been able to help till yesterday. It was from Derek Lever. Oh, poor man. He was insane. In the letter he'd written, he was being instructed by voices to kill his wife. Voices? <laughs> the guardians of the water. The woman from the pool... What? ...and the man of the black water. Oh, my dear Lord. What? They've taken the baby. I let them. I've been looking at the names in the book. I looked them all up. Look. I looked up Lynn. Here. Yeah. Of the pool. Yes, and... Douglas. See? From the black water? Where are they? Down to the church. Rowley was talking about the font. He said he'd been meeting them there. He said... They're very interested in water. What on earth? Help us! Help us! They're going to drown my baby! In the name of the true God, the one God, I command you to leave the child. I command you from the depths of my being and the bottom of my soul. I must confess, all I felt was silly. For 30 seconds, I thought my heart was going to stop. It was my fault. <laughs> I know it wasn't funny at the time, but the looks on those kids' faces. I think they thought they were about to be struck down. Well, they might think twice, though, before they have any more mock christenings. Oh, there's your husband. Oh, uh, come on, Wendy. Now's your chance to meet an international typhoon. <laughs> right. Reverend Floyd. Dr. Jane. Well done. She seems easier. What have you given her? Peace of mind. I should have done it sooner. What? Modern sort of opium. Hmm. Have you seen the baby properly? I think my brother was right. The legend coming true? After all these years, the child of the water. The colour. That pain on him is exactly right. Only one test then. And we'd already have had that if it hadn't been for that name book. You must be careful with the water names. Who will test the child? Soon. Soon. And if we're wrong? The husband thinks the child is not his. The woman is not sure. Ample motive for a drowned child. Oh, Mr. Tate. How nice to meet you after all these adventures. You really must be more careful where you buy a house. In Witchwater Green by Don Webb, Pam Ferris played Barbara Tate. Nigel Anthony was the Reverend Roy Brown, Kate Lee, Wendy Williams, Jenny Lee, Dr. Jane Rayner, and Brian Southwood, Johnny Goad. Witchwater Green was directed in Manchester by Tony Cliff.